Welcome back to Turf Talk Down Under. I'm Stasia and this is Ange. G'day Ange. Hi Stas. Hi everyone. Well, we've been bombarded over the last week with all sorts of trans bullshit on mainstream TV. First there was Q&A's nonsense. Then there was Dean Danny Laidley on 60 Minutes. I I didn't watch it. I only watched the clip they put up on, on Facebook. I watched uh, it. Well, we'll get into it. Um, and then Insight, the oh. gender spectrum on SBS. Uh, so. Well, yeah, uh, the Insight was a good one because I reckon anyone watching who wasn't already in the cult would have been mortified. It was pretty bad. Mm. Um, it was, uh, look, I, I just listened to Sal Grover's Giggle podcast yesterday where she had on um, the woman who runs No Self ID Queensland yeah. on Twitter. Excellent, excellent. Check it out. It's very entertaining um, as well as informative. And one thing Sal pointed out, she just brought up the fact that she, because Sal, Sal Grover was on um the insight program um what was it she pointed out shit i've lost i've forgotten what i was going to say anyway look it was just a cringe fest um the that kid willow really stood out for me so i'm assuming that's a girl mm-hmm. and she's a lesbian i'm guessing she's going to grow up to be a lesbian and her mum said some total bullshit about, oh, I did, along the lines of, I didn't force this on her. I just asked her, do you think you're non-binary? And the kid's just gone, yeah, I think I am non-binary. And it's like, as if it's just a perfect example of the grooming and being coached into this way of thinking. All those munchy mums coach. Yeah. All of them coach their children's speech. And if you watch for long enough, you can see it. Yeah. Munchy yep. eating munch- munchausens. <laughs> yeah. I've remembered what I was going to say about Sal. Yeah. It was, there was a couple on there that tried to raise their baby as <laughs> a they them. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't even get through 24 hours of doing this they them bullshit. And, um, they what they say it was a lesbian couple, obviously a lesbian couple, um, but one of them's now thirty five and and identifying as non binary for Christ's sake. Um, it's like just be a gender non conforming lesbian. It is so ridiculous. You know that um, when for newborn babies, if you buy the you know disposable nappies, that they're boys nappies and girls nappies because of the different anatomy that babies have. Yep. So it's not enforcing gender stereotypes on babies. It's making sure that they don't pee on you. Yes. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, so if someone offered them a nappy, they're going to have to know the, the sex of the baby. Yeah. You know, these people are mad. I, I didn't watch all of Inside because I found seeing um, so much autism represented quite distressing, actually, particularly in some of the younger children. Mm. Um, it was very ob- obvious to me they're on the autism spectrum and some of the adults that were interviewed and I thought um, there was a degree of ableism involved to have people on there um, and putting them under the media spotlight and I felt very uncomfortable watching it. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely thought there, there was a, a woman going by they, him program <laughs> pronouns mm. and... And the way she talked was just like this the whole time. She like had this weird stare in her eye and her voice sort of didn't go up and down much. And I kind of thought, well, she she might have autism. Mm. That was it, a- was. it was just cringe. The whole thing was just completely cringy. Yeah. yeah. I think Sal did very well. Well done, Sal. 
yeah, she and the, and the, once again the um, transsexual golfer was on that show because it's like they drag out their their token um, gender critical trans person, and um, yeah, and that person did really well too. You know, just saying, look, you know, I'm a man. Um, yeah, and Sal defended her position very well. And she was sledged all over um, woke, woke Twitter and she responded very well. So, yeah, I think she's a fantastic advocate for gender critical and feminist folks. So I know a couple, a couple of people have written to the Insight producer saying, okay, now do one on sex is binary. <laughs> yeah. There's no balance in any of these. Yeah. Oh, mm. Which brings us to Q&A, mate. That was just so stacked um, in favour of the pro-trans bullshit. Um, A male panel. Pretty much. They had one woman who was a sports lawyer and, like, her most significant contribution to the whole conversation was, it's all about love. Sport is about love. And she's previously defended um, Hannah Mouncey, who was also on the panel, Callum. And so that's a personal friend of, of a trans activist plus four men. And it was really jarring to hear men discussing women in women's sport between themselves. Yeah. And Mouncey, you know, just completely fabricating the impact of, um, you know, transitioning on, on him. Yeah. Completely just lying and nobody checking him. Nobody. Yeah. Well, oh, one person, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, Holly and um, a woman, Kate, who's also a Melbourne Uni lecturer, um, they've done a little video on it. I just watched it this morning. Um, it's okay. worth, worth a watch. They really pick apart the, um, the science and mm. it's like, the science is that, okay, um, males lose a little bit of, of muscle strength from going on testosterone suppressing hormone blockers um, and going on estrogen. They, use, they lose a little bit, but <laughs> not enough to make it anywhere comparable to um, women's muscle strength. Um, mm. Holly and Kate did a good job, um, but I, look, there were certain things that just pissed me off so much. Like they had that fucking activist endocrinologist <gasps> Ada Chung in the in the front row of the audience. It's like it was just so dishonest. Like fucking put her on the panel if you're if you're bringing in another person with an expert opinion. You know, mm. she wasn't there like an audience member to ask a question. She was there to say, no, Deborah, um, the female weightlifter who had to compete against Laurel Hubbard, no, Deborah, you're wrong. The males, males on testosterone blocking hormones, shit. Um, you know, oh, look, it, it just that made me so angry. There's so many people, so many other endocrinologists have come out and said, Ada is it just an activist. She's, you know, she's not actually talking any tangible science. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I've spoken to endocrinologists myself because I had a kid that had, um, you know, precocious puberty and, um, you know, they'll tell you straight. You know, my kid couldn't go on puberty blockers because of the dangers mm. and that was a microdose compared to what it would take for her to change, um, you know, her sex characteristics or the rest of puberty completely. Mm. So, you know. Absolutely. And um, the other moment was fucking Stan Grant um going oh okay let's um how about the two male athletes on the panel stand up and uh, excuse me fucking Callum Hannah Mouncey is a male stop yeah. conflating male um um sex and gender he's male make you've just had this freaking endocrinologist saying there's no diff like um um trans women don't have a competitive advantage and all this bullshit about oh you can look bigger than you actually but but not you can look big but not have the muscle strength and he gets um Kieran Perkins and the other guy to stand up 
fuck, there's fucking Hannah Mountie in the middle just, like, staring at the camera like she wants to kill, he wants to kill someone. It's, like, it's so mm. disingenuous. Make him stand up as well so we can see what a fucking brick shit house he is. My God. Yeah. He um he was really triggered though because yeah um Deborah the weightlifter did get a very small chance to speak right at the end and talk about what it was like for her to compete against trans identified men and um, that was after Stan had to tell Mouncy to you know calm down a little bit and they didn't let him speak after that because he was just frothing to to you know have a go at Deborah um, because you know they cut him off when he started lying about testosterone not being reduced and all bunch of stuff that he was saying he, re he really wanted the last word he did he did and, they all do and stan was just like uh no we're moving on and he's like okay you know <laughs> like, uh, uh -huh. i was more annoyed by yeah i was more annoyed by the the um editorial that stan wrote also for the abc a couple of days later um where he talked about you know all the bigots that had watched um q a and that you know how prejudiced it was to not admit uh women to uh, men to women's sport but he likened it to um racism yeah. and not including aboriginal people in white people's sport he actually made that conflation as an Aboriginal man. Yeah. And I was livid because where's Stan Grant advocating for the Aboriginal women who are imprisoned with a white male rapist? Where's Stan on that issue? Where are the Greens? Where are any of these so-called Aboriginal activists yeah. on that issue? They're nowhere because they're defending the rapist. Yeah, yeah. Um... You just reminded me because look, Q and A was about ethics in sport, and so they they talked about the um, manly rug, rugby players that refused mm -hmm. to wear the pride jersey, and they're so fucking careful about. It. I know I've said it before, but it's like, oh, they should have been consulted. It's like fucking consult women athletes on whether they have to compete against men, and you never consulted them. And when FINA, the swimming body, went and consulted athletes, 82% of them said no, no men in women's sport. Mm -hmm. Like just the lack of consideration for, for women. Doesn't even matter if they're athletes. Just consulting with women it's, it's like gone out the window yeah well with sex self id nobody was con no women's organizations were consulted no domestic violence orgs none of the organizations that are now being impacted by men self-identifying as women you know predatory men included included in that um not one women's org was was spoken to he went straight to the royal children's hospital gender orgs and got all their information from acon and the gender clinic hmm. i wasn't around for that so i'm not sure oh, yeah. it's horrific you know we all like we made all the women's groups made submissions that were ignored like they were in new zealand you know they were just ignored um yeah and in queensland but we'll get mm. to that mm. so for anyone who doesn't know, I was actually in the audience at Q&A. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a bit of background. Um, I believe it was a woman from Queensland put in a question. So um, Q&A, you know, they put their panel and the topic out on social media and they ask for questions from the public. And if your question gets picked, then you get to go and be in the audience. So obviously this woman was in Queensland. She couldn't go. So she um, gave her spot to Jasmine Sussex and Jasmine was allowed to bring a plus one. So I went and we met up with um, a friend of Holly Lawford Smith's and sat with her. And when we get into the building and they're, you know, giving us our seat numbers and everything, um, they tell Jasmine, oh, no, sorry, actually, your question got dropped. You're not going to be asking a question. And so like, oh, OK. But Kate's question um, got picked. So um, I think the way they do it, they have like 15 people um, in the audience ready to ask a question, but they 
can't guarantee that they're going to get to you and let you ask your question. And so Kate didn't ultimately get to ask her question either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so we're, we're, the audience is all set up and there's a bit of rigmarole for the um, production film crew to go through to make sure that um, they've lined up the cameras correctly on the people that might be asking a question. And so there's all this stuff going on. And so once that's all set up, then they bring in the panellists and everyone has to clap for the panellists. And when fucking Callum start when his name gets called out and he's walking out <clears throat> there were these two obviously butch lesbian women a, a few rows in front of me and in in this like warm-up session previously one of them had revealed that she was in roller derby and when Callum comes out they start fucking going Woo! like really loudly and so I um <laughs> I, I was so tempted to boo. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> instead <laughs> what was that? You'd have been thrown out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I yelled out no, like in a really <laughs> low, like a couple of times. And oh mate, I couldn't contain myself. I was just commenting and saying stuff out loud the entire session. And um it it reached this boiling point where I just couldn't contain myself after listening to Mouncy's bullshit about how weak he is because he doesn't have testosterone anymore. And then Stan Grant said some, some nonsense and I just couldn't help myself. And I yelled out, it's a lie. <laughs> and, and I heard you from my 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 lounge with my kid and my cat who both got the biggest fright because I burst out laughing because I heard your booming voice over everyone talking on Q&A yelling out that's a lie <laughs> classic and then and then like immediately after that he's Stan Grant has gone to fucking Ada Chung for her bullshit and they must have it did it didn't get picked up in the recording but I yelled out she's a transgender activist so what they must have done is like cut the microphone off that was in my area of the audience and then, you know, one of the producers comes up and wags her finger in my face. I don't even know what she said. I was just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and then at the very end, when we're all shuffling out of the studio, um, this woman comes up to me and she's got this massive grin on her face. And she's like, was that you? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that was me. And um, so we got talking and she was there with this other woman and it turns out they're friends with uh, Moira Deeming. Oh, yeah. And I, I swapped numbers and had a phone call with um, one of them a few days ago. And she's got this whole story. Um, look, she's Christian. Um, she was campaigning against same-sex marriage. Mm. Um, she's in Ballarat. Um, obviously same-sex marriage got voted in um, and it was after that that the LGBTQIA plus crowd like went after her big time and you know she said to me look I've got gay and lesbian friends I, I just don't think that you know her stance is that it, it, she's fine with LGB people just she didn't think that the marriage thing should have happened. Um, anyway, they hounded her and uh, got her fired. So she was a mental health first aid trainer oh. and she's no longer allowed in that role because she refused. I think they wanted her to sign something. Like all, all the staff had to sign something or do some training that for forcing them to agree with the statement that gender is a spectrum but from her position gender is binary so she mm. you know coming from that um conservative christian background um 
the, the idea that gender is attached to biological sex, you know, with, which, mm. you know, in so many ways it is. Um, it's interesting because I was a, a same-sex marriage, pretty much an activist for it. Yeah. And at the time there were people saying, oh, you know, this is the beginning of, of all the, the queer perverts making their being normalised and corrupting society. And I'm like, you know, how dare you say that? How dare you conflate lesbian, gay and bisexual people with deviancy? And now we have died. And now the TQ Plus has coattailed via the same-sex marriage into deviancy and degenerate stuff and you know never I thought that when same-sex marriage was you know voted in basically by the Australian public that that was uh that were, that should have been the beginning of you know true equality but now there's this other tier where the queer are more important than every other Australian. They're the most marginalised, the, the most funded, you know. So it, it's not only been like the worst possible scenario on the back of same-sex marriage, it's worse than that because now the very people who thought they finally had acceptance are being demonised, which is same-sex attracted people. Yeah, It's just insane. It's insane. And it's sad because I don't want those genuine bigots to be right or, or uninformed, you know, religious people who don't know any gay people. I don't want them to be right, but mainly the, you know, the real bigots. But there is something in this that there's a real degeneracy in the TQ movement that, you know, wasn't there before. I just saw pictures the other day of a man in pink bike shorts and a pink singlet taking a photo of himself in the women's toilets and talking about how he's just used the women's toilets for the first time and how validated he feels. And um, someone did some digging around and, you know, found his account and, and he's sharing pictures of him in, in fucking adult diapers. Well, Twitter's full of men, uh, trans identified men whacking off in women's toilets. And that, yeah. Like full of it. But you said something earlier about, um, you know, the, the most protected class at the moment. And it made me think of that there was a Coles store manager, mm. super, supermarket manager in Perth. Um, he objected to a trans identified female stripping down to her underwear in the tea room and one of the other employees recorded it and he went to his boss and was like this is fucked up this crosses a line we need Took to get the shirt off yeah to, to show um the scars um we we need to discipline this employee or get rid of her and his immediate boss was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's all fine. It's good. So he went above their head to um, a, a, a higher up manager who essentially said the same thing. And then there was just this vindictive campaign against him by what sounded like a very small minority of employees um, who just wanted to get rid of him. And they brought up, you know, every every single bending of the rules that he had done, which I imagine probably every store manager does bend the rules here and there. They documented the whole thing and got him fired. And he said when he left, there were 45 staff members on his side, something like 15 of them had written in his defence during the whole I think it went to an employment tribunal and it, it all just got ignored for the sake of this tiny minority. Which other class of person gets to fucking strip down to their underwear in the tea room in front of colleagues and not get fired? We know. <laughs> Outrageous. Mm, it is. That poor dude. Hopefully he got another job somewhere else. Yes. 
and then you get that's not just that you lose your job but the media finds out about it and then you get demonized a second time yeah. maybe a year after it happened or whatever by trans activists yeah and then they go after your family and they you know do all that stuff so it's not just the trauma of losing your job for having common sense and trying to be a decent person and following rules that have existed for a very long time. You get the additional trauma of having being demonised once the media makes an example of you as a warning to everybody else that if you speak up on this issue, you're next. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, he's he has got a new job in real estate. I've tracked Good. him down. I've got his phone number. I'm going to try and get him on. He's been avoiding mm. me so far. Um, and I, I hope that my phone calls to that real estate agent haven't affected his employment. Mm. Uh, but anyway, um, and then there was Dean Danny Laidley. Oh, mate. I didn't watch it, so you're going to have to tell us. Oh, look, you know, because me and Danny have had a few little tit for tats on Twitter, little chats. He's threatened to get his lawyers onto me a few times. And, um, you know, I'm used to dudes like him. Uh, that that just comment will get me uh, dragged to a human rights tribunal. But um, now I'm used to, you know, sporty sort of jock types, you know, um, and also people who are trans-identifying. Uh, he comes across to me not as a... a he doesn't make me as angry as some of the others, like Mouncy, Tickle, and some of the other really entitled trans-identified men, the, you know, the AGPs who are all about them, that narcissism. Lately comes across to me as someone who is kind of almost pathetic in the sense that he follows the script. Mm -hmm. He says all the right things, you know, to garner pity. Mm. Um, it is all about him, but he's not as um, aggressive. And I think if there were no cameras there and nobody could record it and you said to him, do you really think you're an actual woman? I suspect he would say, no, of course I don't. I just suspect that that's, I think he knows, <laughs> but that doesn't fit the current narrative. So he's playing the current narrative very, very well. Do you think, um, is it possible that he's being really manipulative and playing the pathetic card? Yeah, I think that's highly possible. Yeah. I mean, you don't adopt, you don't adopt um, a persona and pursue a media career because of that persona. Like, you know, he lost all the attention when he left football yeah. and then he became lost. And look what's happened gets caught dishevelled by the cops, someone shares the pictures, and now he's a celebrity again and everyone wants to talk to him. But now he's, like, you know, got all these women going, oh, we love you and, you know, all this stuff. It's a very, it's, a, it's such, you know, there's, you know, these men, they're like, this is what I want. I want all this this attention and this this approval and they don't mind being seen as, like, a sad, pathetic figure because if they're not, they're just creepy. Yeah. Okay. You know, so no, I didn't. I didn't find it as rage-inducing as many of the other programs that I've watched. But maybe that's because I sort of, um, you know, have a personal connection through my interactions with him. But I just think he's more of, um, you know, a tragic, broken figure than um, than some of them. You know, okay. going to have to jump in and say. He pleaded guilty to stalking, a.k.a. terrorising a woman. At least one. At least one. Um, his children apparently don't want a bar of him anymore, so obviously he's really damaged. His behaviour has really damaged his relationship with his kids and obviously um, his ex-wife and for that former girlfriend or, or woman that he was stalking. Or two. Uh, I think we need to keep that in mind that, you know, behind that veneer of being a pathetic nut job, I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we have a aggressive, abusive man. Yeah. 
yeah. Well, that's you asked me for my opinion of what I thought of the show. Like, I'm not going to go into detail about what I think of him as an AGP okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. because it's, um, you know, it's a totally different thing. But, um, yeah, no, so I think he was portrayed as a tragic figure. I also heard that the interviewer, and I saw a little bit of it, like she's just a sycophant. Like she was a sycophant. Up. And all the questions, oh, that must be so hard for you. Oh, that's so difficult. Oh, you must be heartbroken. They were very leading questions and it was all about how marginalised and, and disadvantaged and how awful things are for him and her and how um, brave it is he he is to, you know, to be public and, and to find his true self. And, and there was a lot of emphasis on gender dysphoria. Mm. Now, I don't believe that he has gender dysphoria. I think he has gender euphoria because he's an AGP. Yeah. And there was no, no discussion of, of, and they, she said, oh, he's got terrible gender dysphoria, but he's not going to have re, um, sex reassignment surgery. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's funny because most people who have horrific gender dysphoria have the surgery in order to make themselves feel you know so yeah it was it was one of the most sycophantic um vomit inducing interviews I've ever seen and the fact that that's meant to be one of our flagship current affairs shows is embarrassing mm -hmm. like and this is what I've noticed though you know the what the the base level for journalism these days and we saw that during the election with Samantha Maiden attacking Catherine Deves mm -hmm. She's a like a Walkley winner, which is a, a high journalistic prize, you know, one of the highest prizes in Australia to receive for journalism. So she's she's obviously, you know, has in the past been a talented journalist. But, you know, particularly with all this trans stuff, the stuff that they're publishing now, it doesn't even, there's no, there's no balance. There's no critical critical thought applied. You know, the standard for journalism, I think, you know, a year nine English student could do better than a lot of these. Yeah. It is propaganda. Yeah. It is not journalism. They've, they've really become activists. And um, someone said in a comment, um, and I, I haven't looked it up, but I will, um, that uh, they've asked, they, they did a little survey of journalists, probably in America, asking them, um, do you think that journalism should be impartial? And this huge number of them said no. Um, like ridiculously, like over 50%. And, but it, it varied by um, age group. Yeah. So the millennials in, in particular are all, absolutely like we we should be able to say what we want without having to be impartial mm. whereas older generations were more conservative toward yeah. we need to be impartial so it, there's this real activist element in journalism mm. at the moment yeah and, they, and you know they've and they, they've tooting their own trumpets too because they're like you know, this guy who interviewed, who wrote the book with, about Danny Laidley, he's going, oh, you know, and I've honed my craft and all this stuff. And I'm like, what? You know? And they take themselves so seriously, yeah. Yeah. you know? It's like, what? <laughs> oh, and that blue tick next to their name, you know, and they think it just makes them this wonderful, you know, social commentator or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, just quickly speaking of crap journalist, journalist, journalism, the Time, Time magazine, Time tweet, they tweeted, um, I'll read it out, Time spoke to genderqueer author and illustrator Maya Kab Kababy or something, Kab Kobab, on about ear work, the efforts to restrict access to ear writing and what a make of the current cultural moment. Does that make any sense to anyone who just heard? So this is these insane, um, what I call them, neo-pronouns that are not part of the English language. <laughs> Mate. Time magazine. Time has fallen. Everything's fallen just about. Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty funny. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, let's talk about Campo. Sounds like a good bloke. He's a Queensland radio host. Mm. Um, 
he's got a daughter and like I think she's a teen teenager and he's very concerned about males being allowed to use the girls toilets at school yeah and he's copped a whole lot of shit for saying it out loud on radio um but he stood firm stood by what he said it's like you know I'm just protecting my daughter if you can't handle that that's on you <laughs> so good on him um it sounds like the the radio station isn't supporting him they're saying they're pretty much said oh how dare he say that out yeah, loud I saw and, that. yeah oh we're, we're doing um sensitivity training or something for the staff <laughs> but he is absolutely right because um there has been a, another reported this time a sexual assault in a Florida school in the girls' toilets where a male student walked in and grabbed her breasts. So he's absolutely right. And anyone, anyone telling him he's 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 wrong is an asshole. <laughs> deluded. Yep. Deluded. I mean, there's this word sophistry. Um, so sophistry is arguing for something that you know is wrong. And that's what these people do all day, every day. It's just, ugh. Well, they block you because they don't have an argument because that always happens to me. Like, oh, I'm going to have a beef with this one. And then they block because they can't argue. Yeah, yeah. Because they're arguing for something that's just absolute bullshit and there's no argument. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I made a funny meme uh, this week um, and I included this this um, screenshot that I got from somewhere, um, which was, uh, it said, uh, coconuts are mammals because they have fur and produce milk. <laughs> it's like that that's the that just for me sums up the whole queer theory way of thinking. It's just absurd. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. Um the National Tertiary Education no. Union, the NTEU. That's for, you know, university staff pretty much. Yeah. Um, have gone full McCarthyist and they've created a Twitter Twitter account called NTEU Turf Watch. Yep. And on that account, there are trans activists who are doxing university staff who they think are turfs. And the interesting thing about that is that they um, they tried to dox one of my cronies, but because that account's only got a handful of followers, nobody did anything. So this one trans activist is trying to make an example of this this um, lecture, this uh, you know, this lecturer, and nobody did anything at all. So there was no you know pylons or anything like that. But you can see what the intention is. It's to shame and you know silence. Women and intimidate and, and 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 anyone who's gender critical, but you know, shame, silence, intimidate. I'll read out this is the description on their Twitter account. There is a transphobia problem in the NTEU. This account compiles publicly available information so workers can best organize against bigotry. Independent. This is a witch hunt. This yep. is um, blatant sexism as well because we know turf means woman yep um I, I don't know what action's gonna follow on from that but like that's pretty outrageous it's um it's pathetic but you know i expect more of it because because the activists know what's happening in the uk and at the moment, they've got the media doubling down, they're doubling down, and all they have is to shame and silence. They don't want any of us, anyone asking questions. Yeah. They don't want any evidence of any resistance whatsoever. So they're doubling down on their attempts to terrify people into not speaking out. Yeah. But what they re don't realise is that more and more people have had enough mm. and they're not going to be able to be so they're refusing to be silenced yeah and you know there's people also that i know who have worked around who have seen this time coming and have actually left their tenured positions 
mm. at universities and created new careers for themselves just so that they can speak out on this this topic. Mm. So you know, they all this all this effort, it's not going to work. Mm. We'll see. You know, we need we need more direct action. Speaking of, mm. um, shout out to Anna McCormack uh, from IWD Brisbane Mianjin. Mm. She held a, looked like a very successful um, no self ID uh, protest over the weekend, last weekend. Um, the videos of the speeches that were given at that rally um, are available. I'll put a link to Anna's account down below in the description. Well done, Anna, um, and well done to everyone who showed up. And um, uh, look, ter terrible news just yesterday. Um, the Queensland Human Rights Commission have released their review of the Anti-Discrimination Act and, you know, that it's the Yogyakarta principles all the way through um, they're basing it on that. They're erasing same-sex attraction. They had changing it to gender identity attraction. Um, they had the audacity to say that uh, in increasing protections for gender identity rights do not erode anyone else's rights, which is just an outright lie. Um, and the other thing which really caught my attention was um, that they're saying that um, the definition of gender identity should not be restricted to transgender and non-binary because the um, the language is constantly changing. So straight asexuals are now a protected category. My mind went to cat gender. <laughs> And I made a meme out of it. It's it's like, okay, you, you want just this open category that where gender identity can mean absolutely anything that you want it to mean. Well, that's going to include cat gender, ape gender, frog gender, cupcake gender. Like. And look, months and months ago, because I must have put in a submission or, or something and... um. I got an, a phone appointment with someone from the Queensland Human Rights Commission to talk about my concerns. And <laughs> I can hear on the phone her typing. And then when I started talking about cat gender, she just stopped typing. <laughs> like she, she didn't believe me. She thought I was a nutter. <laughs> well, see, this is it. it. But even you tell the truth and people don't believe you, they go, now that couldn't be, possibly be happening. Yeah. That can't be a raising you know, same-sex attraction from human rights. They just don't believe you. They go, no, 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 that'll never happen. We just had same-sex marriage. No, no. Yeah. They don't believe you. And this is part of the way that they've been able to advance mm. because you tell people what's actually happening and they go, that couldn't possibly be true. Mm. But there's no pushback. Mm. And so you spend half your time convincing people and showing them all your references and, and pulling, you know, examples out to show people that this is indeed happening. We're not just making it up because we've got nothing better to do. Yep. Uh, you just reminded me of the Giggle podcast again. So the woman from No Self ID Queensland, she said it repeatedly that pe people think that you're like some conspiracy nutter. <laughs> And that you're talking about lizard people. And, <laughs> and But it's like, no, look, here's a government website and this is what they're saying. Go and have a look. Um, speaking of lizard people, the Australian Psychological Association, who a couple of years ago, that's the um, sort of uh, the advocacy body for psychologists, right? Um, they came out a couple of years ago uh, in support of the affirmation model for trans-identifying people, right? and there was a big stink and that was when I first got back on Twitter after nine years or something and you know got into them and um yeah and a lot of um psychologists spoke to me privately and said this is bad this is really bad and this was before the conversion law stuff came in as well so they were saying you know um if, you know to not investigate all the other issues a person may present with 
um, is poor practice. So to just affirm someone, you know, you don't affirm uh, you know, people that come in your door for support. You don't affirm something that is potentially harmful, you know. So, yeah, and so, yeah, um, they, they released a, a statement during the week saying that they will be reviewing their position on the affirmation only problem good yeah and position yeah and that's because they had an internal review and we actually know a couple of the psychologists who were involved in that they had them from both sides of um you know the the gender thing you know some that are gender critical and some were trans activists and the ideology um, spectrum <laughs> yeah so we, they represent both sides and they um, they had a panel and they had reported back to the Australian Psychological Society and, um, yeah, so they, and they're going to review. And that um, I sent that to a few psychologists that I know and they breathe the collective sigh because the psychiatrists have been, um, you know, raising red flags. And for psychologists and psychiatrists, although they're dis different disciplines, mm -hmm. you know, for them to be on opposing sides was really awkward for people seeking mental health support. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, this is really good news for people who are receiving mental health support, but also for people who work in mental health. Mm -hmm. Really good news. And that also may force the legislation around conversion to be um, better explained mm. and because it's bodies like the Australian Psycho Psychological Association who, um, who inform the legislators mm. and they didn't with the conversion therapy bill but they may be able to now because that, that is so, such a broad, mm. you know, there's been no um, specific descriptions of 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 conversion therapy towards a trans identifying person mm, mm, mm. but they've talked about it you know affirmation being the the uh go-to approach mm. but but then you know there's ways to work around that so yeah and that's a really interesting development excellent yeah mm. i knew that they were putting together some task force so i'll yeah. have to read that bernard lane's done an article on it for his gender clinic yeah, yeah. um but you, just as you were saying all that, my mind went to that video I sent you last night of um, a young African-American woman who she's been trans identifying for eight years. She's had all the surgery all the way to phalloplasty. Yeah. And now she's realised that it was a trauma response and it was just the most powerful detransition of video I've ever seen. Um, she cries, um, you get a real sense of the total despair and not being able to undo this and she doesn't know how she, she's going to get on with her life um, have, having done all this to her body. And at one point she says, I'm never going to be able to lose my virginity. So she's never even had... Um, She'd never even had a sexual encounter, it sounded like, before she had the phalloplasty. Neither Jazz Jennings didn't either. True, yeah. It's like, oh, my God, that's what we're fighting for. And These children it, are, are sterilised. They're completely, like, you know, what they're doing to kids is horrific. Yeah. Well, if doing it to anyone is horrific, an adult going through that process is horrific, but to yeah. do it to children, oh. The young it's, and you know the the two D transitioners that came out here in Australia the other week it, it dawned on me that it's a lesbian woman and a bisexual man. This is conversion therapy for LGBs. Absolutely. Yeah, and nearly everyone on Insight was yeah. same sex attracted. True. You know, and you look at them and they go, oh, "I'm a man," and you're like, "No, you're a lesbian." Yeah, you know, and that that it's just it is the most homophobic thing. I think it was um, the Manawahini Carrero girls that said it's not only it's homophobic, it's it's white colonialism. <laughs> you know, it's all these like it's all these things that these supposed left woke people like me are supposed to oppose. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's full blown capitalism. It's commodification of our bodies for financial benefit. Like it is all of these things that the left have been traditionally been fundamentally opposed to. Yeah, yeah. And it's so damned obvious. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, it's like uh, we're, yeah. we're Cassandras. We are mm-hmm. Cassandras. I'm You're- speaking. Of um, that up on Wikipedia, it's an interesting Greek mythology story. Anyway, mm-hmm. yes. Um, speaking of leftists, um, Greens, um, Melbourne City Councillor uh, Rohan Leopard received an apology. You said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so some published statement was made t- calling Rohan and I think Linda Gale saying that they were aligned with trans exclusionary views and that they supported conversion therapy. So I I think this was in the age. I think Rohan and Linda must have threatened defamation, Mm -hmm. legal action against them for that because, you know, Rohan's a gay man. To accuse him of supporting conversion therapy, like, fuck off um so uh, yeah look that was funny um but again we had an activist journalist reporting on that um a man I can't remember his name and he he used these phrases women who were assigned female at birth also known as women Hmm. and non-trans women now if non-trans women exist then trans women the opposite of that must be (laughs) non-women so trans women are (laughs) non-women we we should start calling them that (laughs) it's funny the thing that gave me a laugh was um, when they did that the article about the apology they used a picture of Rohan that must be quite a few years old and he looked like a 15 year old (laughs) schoolboy. gave me a giggle um, yeah. and it's like they don't want to make him look like he is who is you know a, a very handsome you know articulate young man they wanted to find a they felt, oh where's a, a picture that doesn't make him look appealing you know <laughs> all right well the last thing on my list of look we're, we're, I was thinking we're essentially like gender critical media watch we are well we are we're sent we are the gender critical media watch we'll change our name to that see how the journals like that gender critical media watch um i've got two things here i've got the ballarat inclusion plan that you're going to tell us about oh yeah i missed that okay so ballarat is a pretty big rural i'd call it a small city Mm -hmm. um um they've they've just done this freaking lgbtiqa plus inclusion plan for 2022 to 2026 it's a four-year plan it's open for consultation at the moment here's here's how the herald sun described it the plans outline a two-year period in which the council would implement inclusive inclusivity training for new staff, ensure public places, including council premises and public toilets were inclusive, look at publishing or showcasing diversity to children, work with Victoria Police to report and track unsafe behaviour. Now, alarm bells going off here. We've got men in women's spaces. We've got indoctrination of staff. We've got indoctrination of children. And this 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 sounds really sinister, the working with Victoria Police to report and track unsafe behaviour. That sounds to me very much like... Um, what's happened in um, England where they're recording non-crime hate incidents. Kicking lesbians out of pride marches. And that shit. So good luck to them. um, They're also wanting to set up um, LGBT only swimming and gym nights at at the aquatic centre. 
And now this is the bit that really got me. And listen to the numbers as I read this out. The council surveyed 171 people as part of the LGBTQIA plus consultation, 87 of which were themselves members of that group. So that is more than 50% uh, LGBTQIA plus. That's not democracy. That's not how democracy works. And that the rest could be their partners and parents. Yeah. So, oh, mate, I had a chat with a woman from Ballarat yesterday, Kate, who runs um, Reasons to Riot on last week's turf of the week. Mm. Yes, yes. And um, she knows someone that's that's going along to some public meeting that they're holding. So. We'll try and get some feedback. Um, look, it, it is open for um, public comment. So I think you can go and put in your own submission. Mm. Well, you definitely can. I've seen people do it already. So get onto it if you can. Mm. Yeah. Um, during the week, I was listening to Keely J from Standing for Women, aka Posey, um, in my car, and she was talking about traveling uh, around the world to help women uh, start speakers' corner events and things like that, to get women off out of their homes into the streets. Yes. And, you know, we're trying to do that ourselves, but we are having difficulty getting people to come out because of, you know, we live in a scary work city. And the first time you do that is always the hardest. So we're actually, you know, a lot of people say, look, I really want to, but I'm scared my boss will find out. Or, yeah, I really want to, but I'm going to be bashed. Or, you know some and so they're scared but we think that if Posey said I'm coming to Melbourne then people would come so she's talking about it on her um YouTube and other pages so if um you love her or hate her if Aussies could please ask her to come because we need help here in Melbourne we really do yeah you know we are the most woke and the most legislated and the most media, um, you know, uh, stonewalled of all the Australian states. And there are so few of us and we're broadly spread about and we need to get together and get out in the streets and do some direct action. Yeah. So get her posy out here, please. We had to postpone um, our prison project. Mm. So... Um, it's not this, it's not tomorrow, Saturday. It will be the weekend after on the Sunday. Mm. Get in touch if you're in Melbourne or nearby Melbourne. And It'll be fun. Um, but I'd like to see Posey on Australian TV. Would I? Imagine her on the project. That'd be fucking yeah. hilarious. Yeah, they won't have her. Um, yeah, I think that they'll, they'll, there'll be a campaign to keep her out of the country, but I think she'll make it in. I don't think she's done anything too despicable. So, um, yeah, I think it would be great. I think she would attract a huge crowd and a huge crowd of counter-protesters, which can only do us favours. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think that would be good. So, yeah, if, if anyone gets a chance that they could say, come on, Posey, come out to Melbourne, please, and to other Australian cities. So it would be good. Okay. We need help. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, the last story on my list is um, was reported in the Australian. It was the Australian Cervical Cancer Foundation. <laughs> Um, have gone gender neutral and they've been calling women, oh, well, they've been saying everybody with the cervix and people who have symptoms of cervical cancer. And um, the journos got in touch with Holly Lawford-Smith for comment and uh, she did an excellent job. I've got to read this out because it was so good. Um, Holly said a lot of women were gleefully handing their rights in their language uh, sorry, handing away their rights in their language because they had so much empathy for trans men and women. And she says, quote, it's like feminism ha itself has gotten into this incredibly stupid position, acting out these feminine stereotypes of being really kind. <laughs> I just thought that was so good. Yes, it's spot on. Well done, Holly. Yep. Yeah, Holly. And then um, resulting from that, Jasmine Sussex got a little spot on Sky News with Rowan Dean talking about it. Well, well done, done, Jasmine. Mm. Excellent job. Team effort. 
and I've got to go and pick up my kids. But before um, I go, turf of the week goes to the woman who screamed out at, at Q&A, goes to Stasia um, for that magnificent troll that resonated all the way around the world. So, yeah, you know, national television, the wokest show on our um, public broadcaster. And, yeah, it was a, a brilliant move. Well done. Thank you so much. I would like to thank... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I would like to give away turd of the week. Reminder, mm. that's trans extremist radical dickhead, Ada Chung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll second that. <laughs> Ada. All right. Well, let us know what you think in the comments. We didn't have a guest on this week, so it's just been me and Ange talking shit, mm. chewing the fat. Um, let us know what format you prefer because we're considering maybe splitting it up into us doing this media watch style um, show and then having a separate interview with a guest. Um, let us know in the comments what you think. Thank you to our faithful viewers. We really appreciate you. Um, if you've got a good story or a lead idea, email us. It's turftalkdownunder at gmail.com. Thank you. Please like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Final thoughts? No. That's See it. you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.